All right, so I've had about a dozen of these snickerdoodles that my wife just made. So I've got some energy to burn. And I've got a Santa Cruz sketch. So we're gonna go for a little stroll through Salt Lake City, see what sort of trouble we can get into. This should be a pretty fun day. All right, so let's cover a couple of basics about the skitch before we talk about how it rides. The skitch is a bit of an odd duck, but in this really cool, I don't give a damn sort of way, it's really tough to put in this neat and tidy little box. It's part gravel bike, it's part mountain bike, it's part kick-ass commuter. Santa Cruz even goes as far as calling it a teleportation device. And then you take all of that and do what we did to the bike and it gets even harder to define. So instead of trying to categorize it, let's just talk about what makes it so fun and weird and cool and special. The Skitch uses the Fazua Ride 60 drive system with 60 Newton meters of peak torque and a 430 watt hour battery. Unlike a lot of EMTBs that only go 20 miles an hour, the Skitch will do 28 miles an hour, which might be one of the best parts about it. The range on the Fazua system is really good to begin with, but then, you put it on this bike that's lighter and more efficient than mountain bikes, and this range gets really long. So this bike is available in both drop and flat bar configurations, both of which come in in the low 30s on the scale. Both flat bar and drop bar builds are designed around 700C wheels with tire clearance up to 50 millimeters. The geometry falls somewhere between a modern gravel bike and a steep mountain bike. The head tube angle is 69 degrees, which makes it slacker than most gravel bikes, but steeper than most modern mountain bikes. I wanted mine to fit and feel a bit more like a mountain bike, so I went with the double XL frame. That puts the reach at 450 millimeters with a rear center at 430. Add that all up and you have an 1135 millimeter wheelbase. So I rode the Skitch in a stock GX axis configuration and in our custom Franken bike configuration. So what we did is we put a riser bar on it, shorter stem, and a 40 millimeter RockShox Rudy suspension fork. And you can do this because the Skitch's original OG rigid carbon fork is suspension adjusted, meaning the axle to crown height on it will match that of a 40 millimeter suspension fork. So you can swap back and forth without altering your geometry. With the custom build, the Skitch gave me more old school mountain bike vibes. It could have also been the tan wall tires. Either way, it felt really cool and retro. Now let's get into how it rides. So as you'd expect on the uphill, the Skitch makes short work of all of the climbs. It's light, it's fast, it's efficient, and it has a motor. But the most impressive thing about it is how well it transitions from pavement to dirt, to rocks, to roots, and then back to pavement. So I made sure to get a wide variety of surfaces under the Skitch's tires. And I started out in the city on perfectly paved roads, cut across some open parks, sidewalks, potholed city streets, then I hit the trails, dirt roads, and single track. I was blown away by the fact that the Skitch never felt like a fish out of water. It always seemed up for the task. That said, it never felt like the most optimal bike for any given situation. And, and that makes a lot of sense because a bike that can tackle a huge variety of terrain is going to be less adept at any one style of riding. So on the streets, the wider tires and slacker geo made it slower than a road bike would be. Out on the trails, there was less traction than a mountain bike would have. But you could make the argument that if you took a road bike on trails or you took a mountain bike on the road, they would both do far worse than the Skitch does everywhere. As a mountain biker with some crunched and messed up vertebrae, I appreciate the fit of this bike. It's a bit more mountain bike. It's a bit more upright and I guess casual. It's a little less stretched out and aero. I didn't get the sore neck and shoulders that I am used to when I get on leg shaver bikes. I could ride this thing all day and not be worse for wear. So the frame offers a decent amount of compliance in the chattery stuff off-road uh, and it provides enough traction for most climbs. On the steepest climbs that back wheel started to spin and I think that's just going to happen with a skinny tire, a rigid rear triangle and a motor in it but i will say the motor was very helpful nine out of ten times because on on steep climbs where you'd normally have to stand up that would get that back wheel to break loose but the motor allows you to stay seated keeping weight over the back tire so you can just 
keep scooting up the mountain. So from bombing city streets, although very tentatively and cautiously because I found out cars are way scarier than rocks and trees, to zipping around on single track, the Skitch is a very versatile descender. It is stupid fun having one bike that transitions so seamlessly between coffee shop and trails to the grocery store to the office. So again, on the descents, I tried to cover as much variety of terrain as possible. I didn't ride any really rough and rugged bits of trail, uh, but I did spend a fair amount of time on greens and blues, as well as bike paths and pavement and all sorts of surfaces. The bike's handling is fairly stable and confident, and I rode through some kind of rocky sections and never felt like I was gonna be shown out the front door. And that makes sense given the head tube angle is close to a lot of XC race bikes these days. The handling in the corners was nice and sharp. The bike makes its way around tight corners without too much fuss. And in the city, the skitch darts and weaves as well as hops up curbs and off of driveways and just is really fun and turns the world into a playground. It not only gets you from point A to point B, it maximizes the fun you have between those points. So after installing the 40 millimeter suspension fork, the bike gained a degree of capability. With that little travel, it's not like you're smashing into stuff and absorbing these really big hits and impacts. I think of the fork more as a way to absorb some vibration, keep your hands happy, give you a little bit more traction on the front wheel. That's exactly what it did. My hands were happier with that Rudy fork and I did have a bit more confidence in my front tire, especially with cornering and through some bumpy stuff. It just tracked a tiny bit better. So if you plan to spend most of your time on the road, either paved or gravel or mixed surface, I don't think the suspension fork is necessary. If you want to expand the versatility of the bike and start riding more single track, that suspension fork is probably the right move. The biggest limiting factor and what really kept me from riding the sketch hard and maybe fast was not so much the bike and its capability, it was the lack of ability to slow down between the brakes and the tires. There was not a lot of braking traction. I didn't feel comfortable going fast knowing I couldn't shut it down really quickly if needed. Otherwise, the bike is down to party. So who is the Skitch for? Like I said earlier, this bike is weird and it doesn't fit into a nice little category. So that also means the riders who like it aren't going to be in these nice tidy little groups. That said, I will try to group them as best as I can. The first and most obvious group of riders who I think will like the Skitch are the commuters. So if I had any reason to commute to an office, I would most certainly own the Skitch. With both flat and drop bars available, it'll suit a wide variety of riders and different riding backgrounds. With that 28 mile an hour cutoff, you'll be cruising to the office. And I think it's not just that you're there faster. I think there is a bit of safety built into that, that you're able to keep up with the flow of traffic just a little bit better. The Skitch's versatility will be good for commuters who have dirt or trails or any sort of off-road bits between their house and the office. The second group of riders who I think will like the Skitch are the core mountain bikers, especially once you put that suspension fork on there because it's almost like the Skitch traveled back in time to the 1990s. You know, there's something nostalgic about it except for the whole battery and motor part. That's very uh, future, present, contemporary. Uh, but then you combine that with the old schoolish feeling bike and it's pretty freaking fun. And I think it just has this draw for those core mountain bike folks. Next up, I think gravel riders and adventure riders will like this bike quite a bit. Get the curly bar option and you've got a long range adventure bike. Sure, those multi-day ultra distance rides won't be possible because you can't charge your battery, but Santa Cruz does claim a range of up to 60 miles on this thing, and that's a pretty decent gravel ride. Also, keep in mind this motor has zero pedal drag when the motor's off, so you could just pedal this bike and it would just kind of be a little bit heavy, but not even really that bad. I mean, my trail bike weighs more than this. And then the last group of riders I think who will like this are the family folks, you know? You go out with your kids, cruise around the neighborhood. This would be a very fun bike for doing that. And then factor in, you've got a fast kid who's really good at bikes, who whoops your ass up and down the street, Get a sketch, level the playing field, and at least beat your kid at fun having. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for the sketch. Uh, this has been weird, but it's also been really fun. So thanks for sticking around and we'll see you next time.